The Western Bay Health and Social Care Programme first came together in 2012. Uh, that was as a result of four chief execs coming together to explore how we could work more strongly together and, and uh, more effectively across the region. The main purpose really was to make sure that we were able to deliver support and services to our citizens in a more joined up, integrated and effective way. It was really, it is very important that we were able to develop sustainable services that would take us into the future. Um, and it was also very important that um, we were able to make sure that people's own voice was heard um, within that. And so we came together as a, as a collaborative then. It has gathered momentum as the years have gone on. And although there's always been a governance arrangement ar around it, the, the partnership has been much more formalised since the Social Services and Wellbeing Act came into place. The main focus then of, of the programme is to look at the integration of health and social care and to focus on prevention and well-being for um, the people across the region, across Western Bay, um, so that we're also making sure that we have very person-centred approaches to that, with the importance of enabling people to have a voice in the way that services are designed. Um, so voice and control, which as we know is also uh, a key element of the Social Services and Wellbeing Act. Also um, a key aspect of the programme is to make sure that um, both children, young people and adults are safeguarded. So there's a, that's a theme that runs through the Act and it's, it's a clear aim and theme um, of the Western Bay programme as There's well. There's always been a governance structure across um, Western Bay, but that's been more formalised now under the Social Services and Wellbeing Act. And so last year we formally established the Western Bay Regional Partnership Board. Uh, that's got quite extensive membership, so we have local authority elected members and health board members on that board. Um, the statutory directors of social services are on the board. We have third sector representation, we have um, service user and carer representation, we also have the independent sector and uh, chief execs of local authorities are also invited to be part of the board. Underneath the partnership board then we have a leadership group, we have a program team and we have the individual projects or programs that um, the board supports and oversees. Western Bay also has a regional citizens panel. Uh, the citizens panel was set up about a year ago, February 2016. So the panel has representation from uh, people who use our services, from families and carers, and we've also got third sector organisations in uh, as part of the panel. Still early days for the panel. Uh, it's an evolving process, uh, and it's quite a fluid membership. We've had about four or five meetings to date, but we're very committed to ensuring that citizens will have a real voice in the way that services are designed and shaped um, across Western Bay. So to date, it's been a lot about explaining what the, the collaborative is about. It's been explaining what projects and programmes are in. So we've done all the introductions and hopefully now the next phase is, is to make sure that the people who attend those panels can really contribute and shape the future design of services across the region. So the central um, project within uh, the overall Western Bay programme is the Community Services um, Project. Um, uh, what we recognised was that um, uh, if we're going to um, uh, successfully deliver 
uh, a sustainable approach to um, health and social care for older people, then we couldn't continue with um, our historic um, silo approach of um, health and social care um, services. We needed to join those um, uh, that approach up across health and social care and across the three um, local authorities. Um, so that's been the focus of um, that project. I'm really proud that we've developed uh, a coherent and consistent model called the um, What Matters to Me approach um, for supporting um, health and social care needs of older people. Um, we recognise that there were uh, many examples of um, good practice uh, across the region but there wasn't consistency of um, approach and we felt that by working together we could learn a lot about what works from um, different local authorities and then come up with uh, preferred what we called an optimal um, model um, uh, built on all those examples of good practice and then we deliver that um, consistently across the region. It also makes sense of citizens, not fair or equitable that you could be a citizen living um, somewhere within this health board area um, and receive a particular approach um, if you're living in that area but you couldn't guarantee that you would get that approach and that type of support um, if you were living somewhere else in the region even though you were living within the same health board area. That's not equitable, that's not fair, that's not good enough and we've committed collectively to making sure that that's not the case going forward. Um, we're seeing some fantastic examples of um, better outcomes for um, older people, more older people being enabled to um, stay at home longer, um, delaying um, uh, them having to move into residential care, which we know is what um, older people want. Um, success in avoiding unnecessary hospital admissions, um, uh, uh, reducing the time um, spent in hospital when, um, when there's an appropriate hospital ad admission, um, uh, lots more work to do, but nevertheless we've made a fantastic start. Another of the um, larger uh, projects within the programme is the contracting and procurement um, project. Um, this project is uh, focused predominantly on um, uh, promoting uh, better outcomes for um, the individuals with a learning disability that we work with uh, across the region. Um, the approach that we are um, promoting uh, right across the region is a relentless focus on making sure that whether we're carrying out assessments or whether we're um, directly providing care and support to those individuals, that the focus is on um, promoting the outcomes that those individuals um, want and deserve. Um, so again, we've had some uh, lovely examples of individuals being able to move out of more institutionalised settings into more supported living um, type settings which are better for them, that promote their skills and abilities and, and their progression. So again, another project that we're really proud of. And as usual, when we do the right thing, that proves more cost effective as well. WCCIS is an all Wales initiative. It's actually an electronic information sharing platform which has been designed to deliver improved care and support for people across Wales. We actually piloted it in Western Bay because the first local authority to go live on this was in Bridgend and we went live last year in April 2016. Um, it's been designed um, to complement the Social Services and, and Wellbeing Act. And one of the benefits of the, of the system is that it's not just an IT system, because previously I think IT systems we've had is that practitioners have fitted in with the system. The way this has been designed is that practitioners have been able to contribute and help shape it. So the IT system has been designed around the needs of practitioners. A key aspect of WCCIS is that it is a health and social care integrated system, so it will greatly assist the ability to share information between health and social care professions. As, as part of the health and social care programme, we also have a workforce development steering group. The purpose of this is to make sure that we have a much more 
joined up approach to training and staff development across the region. The local authorities um, had already started working more closely together um, but we hadn't been working as closely with our health colleagues so it was important to do that and we recognised that there was a much more integrated way and further work that we could be doing to, to make sure that we have much more of a, a joined up approach. Initially the, the steering group has focused on the training as part of the Social Services and Wellbeing Act to make sure that we were able to meet the requirements of that and in the first six months um, over 900 people went through the training across the region. That wasn't just local authority and health board staff, but also third sector uh, and independent sector st staff as well. There's been a piece of work going on around supporting the domiciliary care providers, um, recruitment and retention of staff. So a much more joined up approach, a lot more work to be done uh, in the Workforce Development Steering Group, but they've made uh, an excellent start. As Chair of ABMU Health Board, I'm delighted to be able to talk about Western Bay Regional Partnership Board, uh, of which I'm vi currently Vice Chair. For us on the Health Board, working with our partners, uh, particularly in local government and the third sector, is absolutely vitally important. We're very lucky in Wales, compared with England, in that we have an integrated system. Uh, in England, it's very fragmented, driven by the market. In here, we have, in Wales, we have a collaborative model. And our relationship with the local authority and the third sector, now that the Regional Partnership Board has been put on a statutory footing, is really important to us. Because we know that we're only really going to be able to deliver high quality services to the citizens and communities that we serve, whether that's in Swansea, Neath Potaba or indeed Bridge End. Uh, we know that we can only do that by working together, whether that's in adult social care or services for, ch uh, for children. Working together, being clear what the priorities are, and being focused on delivering those priorities is absolutely crucial. And that's why, as a health board, we are fully committed to making Western Bay Partnership Board work effectively. I think the partnership is an ideal opportunity for um, all partners across the local authorities and the health board, including the third sector as well, to, to get together and really look strategically at you know, all the, the outcomes that we need to be achieving for, for people. It you know, tends to be the same people that we serve in across the different organisations and within the third sector as well. And with the third sector, you know, we're an ideal resource in that we've got a lot of skills and experience in terms of working with people on the ground that we can really bring you know, a unique knowledge to it as well. I think the benefits for the sector are that we've been recognised more and more as a key strategic player with local authorities and with the health board in terms of providing outcomes and providing positive outcomes for people as well. You know, at a time when resources are tight and when um, we need to be shown that we are doing more to help people with limited resources, it's, it's essential that we all do work together to, to provide what we can for the client group. Robert George Clark. Uh, I was in hospital for a fair while with an abscess on the spine. I came out of hospital early because of the service they'd done at home. Uh, I was on the service for about six weeks and they were fantastic. They came every day and gave me the trip and looked after me well. I can't fault it, I think it should be carried on because they were fantastic. I would have been going up the wall in hospital just doing nothing. Whereas I could come home, watch me telly, watch what I wanted to do and just make a cup of tea when I felt like it and that type of thing. And all the nurses, Sarah and Nicola, they were the main two, they were fantastic but all the other backup nurses were great. They was here on time every time and 
if the time had to be changed, they were there, because they even come out at 7 o'clock in the morning. You know, it was a fantastic service.